Enjoy the film. Sir, that's the fifth one today. The same identical message. Two history bombs do the Cold War in one take? But what does it mean? History bombs, huh? It's gotta be the Russians, that spy network. Maybe something to do with the Manhattan Project. I gotta take this to the president. Hey guys, I've got this. Who's that guy? Pass me the mic, I'm coming through. So you thought there would be peace after World War II? How could you be so naive to believe that we've seen the worst of the 20th century? On one side, the communist USSR, the capitalist USA. Hoorah! The tension's about to blow sky high at the Potsdam Conference 1945. We did it, Stalin. Chalked up a win, and we've each got a nice little piece of Berlin. My victory, Truman. Your troops arrived late, but at least I've seized the Baltic states. So you're gonna pull back? Time to take stock? What? Are you jealous of my Eastern Bloc? So you want Russian help to defeat Japan? Well, actually, I've got an explosive plan. The Potsdam Agreement split Germany and Austria into four occupied zones as an iron curtain fell across Europe. This was the only time Truman and Stalin met face to face. Just one week after the conference, Truman unleashed America's top secret nuclear weapons on Japan without informing Stalin, fueling mistrust between the former allies. This is George Kennan, reporting from Moscow, man. Eyes only for Truman, a long telegram. It must be America's firm intention to contain Soviet global aggression. This is Novikov reporting from United States. Tell Stalin we must spend whatever it takes. The US are clearly laying foundations for total global domination. Kennan's long telegram influenced the Truman Doctrine and Marshall Plan, which provided aid to countries threatened by Soviet communism. The US sent aid to Turkey and Greece, but when they tried to introduce the Deutschmark in Germany, Stalin blockaded supplies to West Berlin. Cue the Berlin airlift! Look up, Stalin, you can block the roads, but the Brits are flying in with peaceful payloads! Ah, get on you, mate! How about some credit for the US on the Kiwi and Canadian effort? We've been dropping 9,000 tons of supplies a day, mostly coal and potatoes, hard they gone, man? Now find me a runway, I need to hit the ground! Ah, you can head home, mate, Stalin, just back down! Oh, what? The Allies flew in vital supplies to West Berlin until Stalin backed down in May 1949. In the same year, the Western Allies formed NATO to counterweight Russia. But that winter, the balance of power was about to shift dramatically east. Comrade, welcome to the Soviet Union, and kudos on your communist revolution. And so a new era for China begins. I need good news to take back to Beijing. An alliance together, if I may say so, would surely put it right at NATO. Let's renew the Sino-Soviet alliance. Agreed. Now, you like rocket science? Stalin and Mao renewed the Sino-Soviet alliance, presenting a seismic shift in geopolitics. What's more, the USSR secretly tested their first nuclear weapon. Both superpowers began spreading their influence abroad backing a complex web of competing governments and rebel groups until tensions crystallized on the Korean Peninsula. Okay, boys, it's good to see you. The commies are backing North Korea, so we'll be supporting our troops on the ground. Getting up close to the speed of sound. All right, now remember, it's a UN mission. We're part of a Western coalition protecting the South. You got that, Briggs? Yes, sir. Time to back me a minute. The Korean War hit a stalemate until an armistice began in 1953. North and South Korea was split along the 38th parallel, a line that still divides the country today. Over the next decade, tensions escalated further and the conflict became truly global. Are you paying attention? Let's go. Stalin died and Truman lost power. In come Khrushchev and Eisenhower. The Warsaw Pact binds the Eastern Bloc, but the Russian and Chinese bond is rocked. In 56, the Hungarian uprising is smashed by the Russians, the world's realizing that these superpowers crush those who oppose. As the CIA ruthlessly hunts in the shadows, the space race makes for a dazzling sideshow. As Khrushchev cranks up the pressure from Moscow in the Berlin crisis, you probably guessed, they put up a wall to split East and West. And just before you begin to relax, an island off Florida has just unpacked a lethal arsenal of Soviet nukes. The world holds its breath, and I'm gonna puke. My fellow Americans, as a Soviet move arts, but a bold load of nukes on the island of Cuba. It would appear that Moscow has fed us lies, and I will not stand idly by. Now I know what you're thinking, last year wasn't great. The Bay of Pigs was a big mistake, but after careful thought, the decisions be made. We'll stop Moscow ships with a naval blockade. For 13 days, the world held its breath as Washington and Moscow communicated via unreliable back channels. Despite some close calls, Khrushchev agreed to remove the weapons if Kennedy removed his own missiles from Turkey. Meanwhile, on the other side of the world, an ill-advised proxy war was growing out of control. Well, good morning, Vietnam. Lit by furious five napalm. Scarred by a million poodle shells. A 
jungle paradise turn to hell And is this battle really ours? Where's the just within this cause? America elephant scared by a mouse drawing lines in the sand when the tide is out For two decades the US fought a futile war against communist backed North Vietnam until the US withdrawal in 1972, President Nixon travelled to Beijing and Moscow, holding talks to limit the arms race during a period known as Detente. However, in 1979, Cold War tensions were ratcheted up once more. Sir, we just got word from Afghanistan, a communist coup! Sounds like a Soviet plan. Yes, sir. The Russians are sending advisors. Clearly, they're trying to undermine us. So let's support the other side. The Islamist fighters! Yeah, that sounds fine. Encourage them to fight a holy war with the Soviet Union. Well, if you're you're sure. The Soviet Union sent thousands of troops to support the Communist Party in Afghanistan, but they failed to defeat local Mujahideen fighters backed by the USA. In 1987, Gorbachev and Reagan signed a treaty to limit nuclear weapons as the Soviet economy began to fail. And in 1989, the eyes of the world turned to Berlin. We are sick of silence. We will not rest. Berlin has won, not east and west. If there's one thing of which I'm certain, it's time to end this iron curtain. We must destroy this brutal visions, this ugly symbol of division. East and West, join the call. Hey, Gorbachev, tear down, down this wall! In 89, the wall came down, and Eastern Europe stood its ground with a sweeping wave of revolutions against their Soviet institutions. Finally, after 50 years of proxy wars and nuclear fears,